for. Well, it's always a pleasure presiding also to follow Richard Leonard. And in fact, I have worn my only red tie <laughs> as tribute to that uh, privilege that I have. And I don't like to disagree with Pam Duncan Glancy, but I don't envy the minister who, frankly, I do have a personal regard for. He's come to this chamber today to defend the SNP government's stewardship of Scotland's colleges. And that's pretty much mission impossible because he knows the impact of his government's 17-year programme of cuts, some really brutal cuts in the college sector, and he knows that that pattern of the last 17 years is continuing in the current financial year to the tune of £26 million. And these cuts have had a significant impact on the sector's capability to upskill Scotland's workforce at the very moment in our economic journey when we need those skills. And the description that has been given of the college sector by various speakers in this debate, both on this side of the chamber and on the other side of the chamber, paints a dismal picture of what the SNP has done to Scotland's colleges. Because make no mistake about it, and here I find common cause with Richard Leonard, the college sector is a key driver of equality of opportunity and an engine for economic growth. These cuts of the last 17 years, the cuts of the current financial year, must be reversed. And I know that the Minister is going to stand up any moment and he's going to recite his famous lines and favourite lines about where are you going to find the money from, what are you going to cut in order to, to reverse the cuts. Well, it's the job of a Scottish Minister to set policy priorities. And if the government have lost the will to set political priorities, have lost the ambition to put Scotland's economy and its people first, then they should move aside and let someone else be the government of Scotland. Someone who does have the ambition for our country and its people. And if he uses those well-worn lines which are so, so carefully crafted and repeated by the Scottish Minister is consistently about spending, then I think it's almost a tacit admission that the SNP has failed to properly prioritise education and skills. And as he said himself, the Minister said himself, it's not where he wants the college sector to be. And I say amen to that. So let's change it. If you want to tackle intergenerational poverty, and worklessness, if you want to improve national productivity, if you want to create greater equality of opportunity, you don't cut education and skills, you invest in them. And so I have four things that I'm going to ask the Minister if he would be so kind to respond to. And I think all of them are positive. First, will he commit to driving momentum on the delivery of the recommendations of the Withers Review? Because I hear voices in the college sector and elsewhere in the skills sector saying that there has been a loss of momentum around the reforms that Withers uh, uh, recommended. And as has already been said, it is coming up to the first anniversary of the Withers Review. Reform is needed more today than ever before. Second, will he recognise that we need to have an open and honest conversation about what's being delivered? for £3.2 billion in the education and skills budget. There's no point in talking about the size of budgets without talking about what is being delivered. Now, Withers makes a good start in this dialogue, this open, transparent and accountable discussion about what it is that's being delivered. It's not enough just to talk about sums of money, it's what is actually coming out at the other end. Third, can I ask the Minister, if in his heart of hearts he knows that the current system of funding colleges is overly complicated, bureaucratic and wasteful, because it is too many pots, too much needless reporting, too much micromanagement. By all means, agree deliverable outcomes with the colleges, conclude, but Mr. then Kerr. let's leave it to the colleges to deliver them. And last of all, my last point, my fourth point, is about the state of the college's estate. Yeah. The fact is that this has gone on for years. This is not about one year's capital budget. This is about sev several accumulated you years must conclude, of underfunding. Mr. Kerr. I will conclude by saying this. How is the minister going to deal with the seven colleges that have rack? on their campuses. What's he going to do about the state of those college estates? Thank you, Mr Kerr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.